It's music her husband loved most, soothing, comforting. Charlie Swinney battled cancer for 16 years. He had over 200 tumors in his body. He was just filled at that point. 200. Over. And our investigation found others across the country, all Navy veterans who either died or are fighting cancer, and all shared one thing. He started thinking, you know, this isn't right. This is, you know, this isn't right at all. Why, you know, why are there so many of in us, our close group getting sick like this? They all served at McMurdo Station, a U.S. Navy base in Antarctica in the 60s and 70s. And it was powered by this, a portable nuclear plant. Jim Landy's cancer spread from his stomach to his esophagus and his liver to his brain. I believe it was a greater risk than what we all assumed. Our investigation took us from California to North Carolina and Wisconsin all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. We found Jim Landy here in Pensacola, Florida, and he too is dying of cancer. At one time, I heard the siren. Something happened up there, but you know, they, we weren't made aware of it. In fact, we found 400 38 malfunctions from 1964 through 1972. The Navy's final operating report also found leaking water surrounding the reactor and hairline cracks in the reactor liner as early as 1964. It was finally shut down in 1972 and later dismantled when possible stress corrosion cracking in the piping system was discovered. I was amazed at how many times they had malfunctions. You know, we didn't have an accident, we had a malfunction. The same report found contaminated soil was loaded into dump trucks, hauled away uncovered, and loaded onto cargo ships for disposal in the United States. And then I got thinking about all that, all that excavated soil passing through town and clouds of dust from all this stuff, and I'm going, gee whiz. Uh, did, did it give me cancer? Still, the report concluded no significant increase in radiation exposure. Jim Chalk lives in Wisconsin. He had testicular cancer. Uh, it kind of makes you wonder. Uh, when the doctor saw me, he, he kind of scratched his head and said, you're kind of old to be having testicular cancer. And later survived lung cancer. One person would pop up and then Oh, did you hear about Wally? He died from uh, lung cancer or throat cancer. And did you hear about so-and-so? They had a brain tumor. And did you hear about so-and-so? They had testicular cancer. In North Carolina, Bob Boyles battled thyroid cancer. And the first thing the doctor asked me was, is, uh, well, that's the type of cancer you typically get from exposure to radiation. He says, when were you exposed to radiation? Boyles remembers questioning a supervisor while they disposed of the plant's equipment. I asked him, I said, well, is it safe for us? And he goes, yes. It's safe, just don't go over in that area over there because we're not sure about that. We think that might still be a little dangerous. But our investigation found that for years, veterans' complaints about possible radiation exposure have fallen on deaf ears. From Idaho, Carl Sackman sent this 2002 letter to the VA saying it was common knowledge that leaks occurred. So did Wally Glennon in South Carolina. His widow saved his letter to the VA pleading for help. The only common factor was a nuclear power plant at McMurdo Station, Antarctica. I would hope that a thorough investigation is underway to determine if the facility in Antarctica in any way could have caused the health problems of myself and my shipmates. Both men died of cancer, and all of the men we spoke with want answers. Some haven't even been identified. Um, what about the other people that were down there? How many, how how big does this ripple go? And back home in Ohio, Charlie Swinney died bankrupt. The VA denied his repeated disability claims. He felt like he was kicked to the curb. He felt like he didn't count. He, uh, he felt betrayed, actually.